for a new year. We sing hymn number 513. Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hope on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Help me sing this great hymn of the church. It is prayer time. Let us all go in prayer. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me. Lord, whither shall I go? Lord, we come humble before you this morning. Thanking you for another Sunday. 
thanking you for another day. You were the one that awakened us early this morning. And the breath was still moving in our veins and lungs. So, Lord, we say thank you. We ask you in the name of Jesus, if you would just have mercy upon us, touch us, Lord. Remember all those that are sick. Touch them where they really need you because you are the real doctor and you never make any mistake. Lord, I ask you to have mercy upon us. Those that have lost their loved ones, Heavenly Father, be with them. Wrap them up in your love. Let them know that you are God and besides there's none other. We're asking you to bless these ministers this morning. Bless this pulpit in a special manner. Lord, we need you, Heavenly Father. And we realize more and more that we can't get along without you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Touch us, Lord, with your holy hands. Touch us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Because you are the real doctor. You are a doctor that never lost a patient. So right now we thank you, Lord. Be with the one that's going to break the bread of life for us today. Touch him, O oh Heavenly Father. Be with the one that's gone away to see about his mother. Oh, Lord, we know that you have her in your care now. Touch her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I would pray this morning if I really knew how, but I want you to take me by the reign of my mind. Lead me from one good degree into another. And if I've done anything, Lord, that's unpleasing to you, Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me because it was not on purpose. Have mercy upon all of us. Touch us this morning. Fill this church with your spirit this morning. Move from door to door and window to window. Have mercy on all of us, Lord. Remember our children. Remember those that are here and the one that's gone away. Have mercy this morning. Be with all of us and keep us. Because, Father, if there ever was a time that the whole world needs you, it is now. So stay prayed up because God is a God that hears and he also answers prayers. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I say one. One more day. I thank God. Just for one. One. One more day. Oh. One more day. That the Lord has. The Lord has made a way, and I thank God. Just for one more. One more. One more. Day. I'll say one. One more, day. one more day to get it right. <laughs> one more day to proclaim Him. See you, first lady. Just for one, one more, oh, one more. That 
Able, please rise for the reading of God's word. Today's scripture comes from the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, and we will be reading verses 4 through 10. <laughs> 6 through 10. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. What are you, mighty mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone, the shouts of God bless it, God bless it. Then the word of the Lord came to me. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know that the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Who dares despise the day of small things? Since the seven days of the Lord that range throughout the earth will rejoice when they see the chosen capstone in the hands of Zerubbabel. This is the word of the Lord for all who are here on this last worship Sunday of the year. Amen. You may be seated.
I want everybody to help us on this song now. If you are a soprano in the house, I want you to sing this part with me. Now I want to hear sopranos out there. Come on. Stand up with your soprano. I want to see my sopranos in the house. There's one. Give me three more. And He'll never leave. He'll never leave you. Oh no. Man. Sounds good. Alto. Do I have some altos out there? Let's do it again. Let me hear my alto. Y'all ready? One, two, ready. Here we go. Sing. Oh, I love it. Come on. One more time. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? All right, do I have a tenor in the house? Do I have any tenors out there? Can I see a hand? I don't got no titters. There's one, there's no one. Here we go. Titters. Hold the mic up for me. Emmanuel. One more time, Emmanuel. Here we go, make a joyful noise. Three, 
mine, it's mine. And the people of God said, amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, go with me now to Zechariah, the fourth chapter. And we're going to shine our sermonic spotlight on the sixth verse, which the Reverend Mary Turner has already read. I want, to hear, I want you to hear it again. Zechariah, the fourth chapter, the sixth verse, where we find these words. And so he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I want you to pray with me these next few moments from the subject, God will finish what he started. God will finish what anybody grateful today that God will finish. I mean, you almost at the finish line for 2023. God will finish what he started. God, I have studied, but I need your strength. I have prepared, but I need your power. I'm willing and I want to, but only you can make me able. God, your people, as they go into a new year, they don't need to hear from me. They need to hear from you. And so, God, use me today as your mouthpiece, as your conduit. God, speak through me and allow no flesh to glory in your sight. God, I bless you not just for what you have done, but for what you're getting ready to do. Send, O oh God, fresh anointing and fresh power that we might find strength for our situation. In Jesus' name I pray. And the people of God said, Amen. God will finish what he started. When you consider, when you consider the immensity of the dream that God has for you and the blessing that God has for you and the future that God has for you, you are already keenly aware of the fact that you will deal with some challenge, you will deal with some opposition, and you will deal with some setbacks. Because the devil, when the devil gets busy, he will do all he can to convince you that it can never happen. But God's word for you before you go into 2024 is that you know for yourself that God finishes what God starts. See, this is a word that all of us need to digest and internalize because you are going into 2024 not as a victim, but as a victor, not defeated, but a winner, not pathetic, but prosperous, not stumbling, but running, not limping, but leaping, not with your head down, but with your head up, not in a slump, but with a shout. In fact, is there anybody here who can say, I'm just grateful I'm going into 2024? There are millions who didn't make it, but I'm one of the ones, I believe I've got somebody here who's got a praise because you're already grateful for what God is getting ready to do. I feel God in this place. Uh, do you know Kirk Carr? Kirk Carr said it this way. God's mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. The devil thought he had me, but Jesus came and grabbed me. His mercy kept me so I wouldn't let go. Anybody have that testimony? I mean, if you just push the rewind button and go back into 2023, can you say God's mercy kept me so I wouldn't wouldn't let go. I could have been a statistic. I could have been dead and gone. But can anybody testify that God has been good to you? God has been better to you than you've been to yourself. And so God's mercy kept you so you wouldn't let go. See somebody, you're not even shouting, but you have a justifiable reason you should have given up this year. You have a justifiable reason you should have lost your mind. You have a justifiable reason you should be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but you're sitting in this sanctuary because God's mercy kept you so you wouldn't let go. Have I got a witness here? Have I got a witness here? Have I got a witness here? Come on now. So I feel this thing. So the text, I better go on to the text. I got to get on to the text. In the text, we find 
uh, Dr. Wayne, we find the prophet Zechariah, who was given a word and a vision for the people of God and for their leader, Zerubbabel. Now, Cyrus had already given them a providential provision to the Jews. He let them return to Jerusalem. And Zerubbabel is governor over these returning exiles. It was his job to lead them in the reconstruction of the city and the temple that had all, that where they had already lived and worshipped. This was a time of anticipation. This was a time of joy and expectation. This was a time of exuberance and unlimited possibility. For no longer would they be stuck in Babylon as refugees where they hung their harps on a willow tree in a time of resignation. But now they were able to go back home. Their feet were just about to strike Zion. They were just about to lay down their heavy burdens because God had been good to them and God had given them a future and a hope. God had given them the, the vision to rebuild Jerusalem and uh, they were a reconstituted and a restored people because God not only restored and reconstituted them, but God restored their praise. And I wonder if I could ask you a question real early in the sermon today. Has God done anything in your life to restore your praise? I mean, has God done anything in this season of your life to restore your praise? Do you have anything to reflect on and be thankful for in this season of your life? I don't know what you got in your pocket, but you ought to at least have a hallelujah somewhere in there because if God allowed you to see the last day of 2023 there ought to be a hallelujah somewhere on your lips I thank you Jesus somewhere on your lips I praise Jehovah somewhere on your lips did anybody come today grateful for another season see as we consider these last 13 hours of 2023 your losses are not as catastrophic as they could not have as they could have been. You've not lost your house. You've not lost your mind. You've not lost your bank account. You've not lost your source of income. You've not lost your life. Can you testify? You cannot lose your praise. Not when God has been so good to you. And yet you can still rejoice because the God we serve can not only keep you through a pandemic, but he'll keep you through so many setbacks. He'll keep you through the loss of a loved one. He'll keep keep you after you run out of reasons to be kept. He'll keep you in the midst of it all. And that's a reason to praise my God. See, aren't you glad that we serve a God who will give you back some of the things you lost along life's journey? He'll give you back your praise. He'll give you back your passion. He'll give you back your joy. He'll give you back your zeal, your enthusiasm, your vigor, your zest, your vitality. And then he'll give you power and peace to keep on running the race that he has set before you because God will finish what God has started. See, God gave his people a praise in the text that reconstituted their faith and, re and gave them strength to run on. They reconstructed to the altar. Together, they laid the foundations of the future. Together, they were rebuilding their city. And yet, no sooner than they got started, opposition arose just as soon as they were on their way uh, trouble came. Legal injunctions were filed. Uh, st uh, tactics of intimidation were fashioned to suspend the progress of the people of God who pursued the dream of God. And I want to tell you, I'll drop this one on you for free. Everybody near you ain't for you. And that's why you got to be careful who you hang out with in 2024. See, the enemies of Judah were successful in making an injunction. So much much so that he, that he caused things to be suspended for seven tried he tried to mess things up ordering that for 17 years they would stop the rebuilding of the house of God now that was a blow to their forward progress that was a blow to their future they had already learned so many lessons while they were in exile they were laboring to dis to, 
demonstrate their confidence in God and in the reconstruction enterprise that God had set for before them. The vision was already explained. The foundation was already laid. The altar was already built. Ah, they were making all kinds of progress only to experience an interruption in their momentum and a stoppage in their work. And for somebody, that's where you are today. You're trying to make it, but somehow things are, not, you feel stifled in your progress. Uh, and you're wondering, have you misinterpreted what God told you to do? See, sometimes while we're on life's journey, sometimes we're faced with things that cause us to wonder, am I doing what I'm, what I want to do? Or am I really doing what God told me to do? Because I've reached an impasse and I'm trying to figure out where do I go from here? So is it foolish for me to believe that this project is my project or is it God's project? Because here I am so little and here the project is so big. God, how am I going to make it? And God, why would you let, if I'm working for you, then why would you allow this to happen in the first place? God, why would you permit me to start out only to arrive at a dead end? And if you would admit it, you've been right there. And when God shows you a possibility, when God drops something, and God downloads something into the iPad of your spirit, when God gives you a vision, and you decide, I'm not going to fight God this time. I'm going to do what God told me to do, only to feel like you've been stopped and you've been stifled. But I want you to know today that you can make it. See, if God woke you up in the wee hours of the morning, if God snatched you from a deep sleep, if God woke you up and said, circle this, highlight this, underline this, then God is going to finish what God started. If God told you to do it, God is going to finish what God started. I know you've gained momentum and you're wondering where do you go from here? But sometimes you got to wait on the Lord and be of good courage because he will strengthen your heart. You may not understand what's in the fine print and you may not understand what's going on tomorrow or the next day, but I want you to know that God will finish what God started. See, they are knee, beat, knee deep rather in defeat, but God sent a prophet. He sent a prophet with a word of hope and a vision of possibilities. And maybe that's a good shouting place right there because when torturous thoughts are leasing space in your mind and when agonizing doubts have taken up residence like squatters in your spirit, it's good to know that God can still send a word. If you Whatever goes on in your life, whatever has gone on, aren't you glad that God has a word for you? And there's somebody who made their way to Quinn Chapel today. You didn't come looking for a specific pew. You didn't come looking to see who's sitting next to who, but you came because you need a word from the Lord. You've decided I before I go into a new year, I need God to tell me something. Before I get into another mess, I need God to tell me something. Before I take another step, I need God to tell me something. Is there anybody here who can say, I know why I made it today. I came because I need to hear what God has to, if I'm going to come out of my situation, if I'm going to overcome my predicament, I need God to tell me something. So speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Oh, and I'm glad God will give you a word of help. He'll give you a word of healing. He'll give you a word of hope. He will replace the negative with the positive, the fearful with the faithful, the problematic with the possible. God will swap out your thoughts and take out what doesn't need to be there and put what needs to be there. God will do what God has to do in order to get the job done. See, God sends Zechariah with a vision and a word. The vision was of a solid gold lampstand. Now, it was with a bowl on top and seven lights around it. The seven lights represent the eyes of God as a reminder that there's nothing hidden from God because God sees all and God knows all. And the two olive branches represent the leadership there they, that they appoint that was appointed by God to lead the people of God. Their vision had that had been cast, and God wanted them to follow God's word. And God goes on to say, not 
by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. As they stared at what appeared to be a dead end, God said it will get done. And God sent me here on this last day of the year 2023 to tell somebody who's listening to me right now, as you vacillate between what you see and what God said, God sent me here to tell you that it will get done. In fact, come hell or high water, it will get done. And somebody, you're scratching your head. You're saying, preacher, you don't know my situation. You're right, and I don't need to know your situation. But I want you to know God can get it done. You're sitting there, and you're saying, how can I get the business off the ground when we're dealing with a cert- with a, an economy that is so uncertain? But I want you to know God can get it done. How do I go back to school when I'm a little older and I've got so much on my plate? Well, God can get it done. How can I raise these children who seem to be d- driven to dysfunction? I want you to know God can get it done. And is there anybody here with a testimony that God can get it done? Even when you're seeing drama and dysfunction, even when you're seeing stress and distress, even when you're seeing disease and dis- difficulty, I want you to summon the courage to say to yourself, God can do it regardless of what I see. And can I tell you today, for those of you who haven't said anything just yet, can I tell you today, we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. In fact, we walk by faith and not by sight. And therefore, we're going to make it because he who has begun a good work in me is able to complete it at the end of the day. Anybody know we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord? Anybody know that he's never failed me yet? Anybody know that he's a God who sits high and he looks low and he's made able to make everything all right? I wonder, is there anybody here who has a testimony that in this season of my life, I just know he's going to do it. In this season of my life, I just know he's going to make a way. In this season of my life, I just know he's going to work it out. In this season of my life, I just know he's going to turn it around. In this season of my life, I've got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Have I got a witness here? Don't know how he's going to do it. Don't know when he's going to do it. But I've got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Well, let me give you three and I'm through. There are three things that come out of this text and I'm through. First of all, you've got to put yourself, you've got to put your trust rather in the knowledge of God. You've got to put your trust in the knowledge of God. You know, contrary to what people felt, God is very much aware of their situation and their complications. In other words, there is nothing in your life that God doesn't know about. He sees before you. He sees beside you. He sees behind you. In fact, God sees it before you see it. As a matter of fact, God sees it before there's an it to be seen. Preach, Covington. And you can shout because of the unknown. Uh, Because what is unknown to you is fully known to God. Can I get a witness here? Because God does not just have precognition, God has omnicognition. In other words, God, there is nothing that God does not know. God is intimately and keenly aware of a thing before it even comes to reality. He's acquainted with every stage of its development. Uh, And that's why Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 54 and 17, that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Because God sees the weapon and God knows the weapon and he has your back long before the weapon is formed. And therefore God is stable, is able to stabilize you and secure you before the weapon is even formed against you. And even if the enemy manufactures a weapon against you, you keep on keeping on because the weapon is already obsolete in the hands of almighty God. Because God builds up a security system around you 
so that you can keep on keeping on so that no weapon formed against you shall be can anybody throw up your first praise of a, of the day because you know God's got your back and I know I know there's somebody saying now preacher if God knew it was going to happen then why did God let it happen you looking through the wrong lens you ought to shout because it didn't happen ah uh, you ought to shout because God protected you you ought to shout because God kept you I know they lied on you I know they tried to take you down but you ought to shout because you're still standing you ought to shout because you're still here you ought to shout because God has been an ever-present help in the time of trouble uh, have I got a witness here have I got a witness here God knows what he promised but God has not forsaken you and God has not forgotten you and he's never failed me yet. The second thing to come out of the text is that you've got to put your trust in God and follow his lead. Put your trust in God and follow his lead. In the text, we find two olive branches. In the vision, they are the reminder of the leadership that God had anointed to preside over the people's promise and their pilgrimage, symbolizing that Joshua, as the priestly leader, Joshua, who was the priestly leader, and Zerubbabel, who was the political leader. This was a reminder that their purpose was maintained through the promise of Almighty God. And that's a word for somebody today. That's a word for all of us today. Because there are so many people who are drifting. There are so many people who are dealing with uncertainties. And that's why they jump from fad to fad, from place to place, from person to person, from church to church, from relationship to relationship, from job to job, from city to city, from situation to situation, from addiction. I'm trying to get y'all to talk talk back to me now from addiction to addiction trying to find meaning and fulfillment but money can't give you meaning a job can't give you joy your identity is not defined by your employment your self-worth is not tied to your net worth because all by yourself you are still a child of the king and is there anybody here grateful today in fact look at your neighbor and say neighbor do you know you sitting next to royalty I'm a child of the king I'm an heir of salvation I'm a royal priesthood do I have any king's kids in here who can say I'm a child of the king that's why I walk with him. I'm not conceited I'm convinced I'm a child of the king that's why I walk with my head up I'm a is there anybody here who can celebrate God because you're a child of you're a child of the king see nobody can define for you what your life means but God Nobody can tell you how this thing will end up but God. Nobody can tell you how things will turn out next year but God. Nobody has your owner's manual but God. He signed your note of authenticity before you ever knew him for yourself. And the next things of God can only be comprehended by your completion of the now things of God. In other words, your next is waiting for your right now to pass. And if you don't move right now, you may not get to see what's next. Your next blessing is coming, but you got to take care and move right now. And God, God wants to show you that the next things of your life are going to fulfill, be fulfilled if you live out the now things of your life when you walk it out. When you walk out the now things, you can say, God's getting me ready for what's next. And I wonder, is there anybody here who can celebrate because you recognize that you're next in line and your next blessing is coming? In fact, I wonder, is there anybody here who can say, I'm next in line? My credit report may not be 800, but I'm next in line. My vision may not be as clear as it once was, but I'm next in line. My money may be be funny my change may be strange my credit may not get it and my pennies may not be many but I'm still celebrating because I'm next in line is there anybody here who can celebrate I'm next in line for God's blessing watch what God tells Zerubbabel he said I don't care don't you dare give up now, even though your progress seems paralyzed don't you dare give up 
Even though it looks like you're watching in circles, don't you dare give up. Even though you want to turn around, don't you dare give up. Even though it looks like it'll never work out, don't you dare give up. Even though you've come to the end of the road, don't you dare give up. Even though it looks like people have given up on you, don't you dare give up. Even when people don't understand your vision, don't you dare give up. Even when your bank account is low, don't you dare give up. Even when the doctor says no, don't you dare give up. Even when the judge shucks, shakes his head, don't you dare give up. Even when it looks bad, don't you dare give up. And do I have anybody here who can say, I'm not going to give up, but I'm going to look up. I'm not going to give up, but I'm going to step up. I'm not going to give up, but I'm going to get up. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? Is there anybody here who's determined to get up? After all you've been through, you're going to get up. After all you've come out of, you're going to get up. After all that they've said, you're going to get up. Is there anybody here who can say, I'm going to get up? After all the midnights, I'm going to get up. After all my tears, I'm going to get up. Somebody shout, I'm determined to get up. So, I'm almost there. But I've got one more thing that comes out of the text and I'm through. Third, third thing to come out of the text, Brother Richard, is that you've got to put your trust in the provision of God. You've got to put your trust in the provision of God. See, part of the people's frustration was due to how little they seemed to have. In their evaluation of their situation, it didn't look like they were going to get the victory. So the job was so difficult that God had to tell them, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. They were discouraged because their formula for success contained the wrong variables. They were sitting there trying to figure that thing out and map that thing out. And God said, you can't do this. You, you can't do this by yourself, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. They were, they were thinking earthly assets and worldly resources. But God wanted them to understand that when you're talking about your, talking about your destiny, when you're talking about your internal purpose, things tied to time are secondary and not primary, not by might, not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord, in the vision, the branches in the lamp represents the, uh, represent the abundance available to the people of God. The spirit of God. Uh, God will provide whatever they need. And that's my word for you. As you go into a new year, God will provide whatever you need because the work of God in our lives is a spiritual work that requires spiritual power. The people were worried about God, but God reassured them that his purpose and his plan will get done. His power by way of his power and his provision. See, God is going to work it like God wants to work it, where God wants to work it and how God wants to work it and through whom God wants to work it. And you better get that because God will abundantly provide. That's why you can't look at the past as if the past is our only potential. The devil is a lie. As we look towards the future, we're praying that God will continue to grow us both spiritually and numerically. And even if we hit a rough spot sometimes, we still have to believe that God can get it done. I believe that because God will abundantly provide. I rebuke a spirit of lack. I rebuke a spirit of stagnation. And I rebuke a spirit of self selfishness. David said in Psalm 37, 27 rather and 13, I would have fainted lest I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Isaiah 40 around verse 30 said even the youth shall faint and grow weary. Young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31 but they that wait upon the Lord shall 
already knew their strength. Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. In other words, it may not come the way you think it's going to come, but God said, I'll supply everything you need. Ah, and then he anchors that power when he calls his own name. He calls himself the Lord of hosts. Now, in the ancient Masoretic Greek text, this is literally translated as the commander in chief. And what God wanted them to understand is that God has his own army. God doesn't need the enemy's army. And God is not scared of the enemy's army. God has his own army. God has his own weapons. And therefore, hear this, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. God says, I engineer a way out of no way. I construct doors that no man can shut. And when the enemy comes against you, I'm the one to stick out his feet so the enemy will stumble and fall. I'm the one who causes you to recover everything that the locust has tried to eat up in your life. I will restore everything that the enemy has stole from you. I will stand with you. I will stand before you. I will stand beside you. I will be with you. I'll be with you when you're up. And I'll be with you when you're down. I'll be with you when you're on the he said, she said list. And I'll be with you when your name is in the paper for having done something good. I'll be with you. And so the Bible lets us know that they had a halt in their progress. Their opposition seemed insurmountable. But God told Zerubbabel, this will get done. They may not, they may be big now, but they won't be big always. He said, don't despise the day of short beginnings because I'm able to complete it at the end of the day. And I wonder, did you come today with some celebration shoes on? Because you know that if God God started it. He will finish what he started. I don't know about you, but I'm declaring one of the things Reverend Mary says on Sunday mornings as we gather in the library. She says, I'm claiming good. Well, I don't know what you're doing in 2023, but on my way into 2024, I'm claiming good. I'm already on my way. I'm claiming good. My dream is already unfolding. I'm claiming good. My future is already happening. I I'm claiming good. My blessing is already coming. I'm claiming good. God's already dispatched my miracle. I'm claiming good. Is there anybody here who can say I'm claiming good? Well, don't wait till the battle is over, but shout now. It may be small now, but bigger is coming. It may be small now, but bigger is coming. You don't get a tree until you have a little acorn. You don't get a snowstorm until you have a snowflake. You don't get a big hurricane until you have a rainfall. And is there anybody here who can say it might be small right now, but bigger is coming. It bigger is coming. Bigger is coming. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, in 2024, bigger is coming. Bigger is coming. Bigger is coming. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to say that you ain't seen your best days yet. You're, the best is yet to come. The best miracles are coming. The best breakthrough is coming. The best tomorrow is coming. The best hallelujah is coming. Is there anybody here who can shout the best is coming? I'm getting ready because the best is coming. I'm shouting because the best is coming. I've got joy because the best is yet to come. Somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. Is there anybody here who can say the best is coming? The best is coming. I'm getting ready because the best is coming. I've got joy because the best is coming. I've got a shout because the best is coming. I've got joy because the best is coming. Is there anybody here? Who can say the best is coming? The best is coming. 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 
Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. Have I got a witness here? Have I got a witness here? Have I got a witness here? And so as we stand all over this sanctuary, you have the right to praise God because the best is yet to come. God bless you to all of our online viewers. We pray that this worship experience has truly blessed you. And so in order to connect with you, let me ask you just some very important questions. First question is, have you given your life to Christ? This is a call to salvation. If you've not given your life to Christ, if you've not confessed him as your personal Lord and Savior, I encourage you to do so now. If you put number one in the chat, we will reach out to you and pray the prayer of salvation with you because it is that just that important to us. Then the second question, are you a part of a church home? Do you have a covering? Would you like to be a virtual member and e-member here at Quinn Chapel? And we would love to reach out to you and share with you what that looks like. But we would also love for you to have a covering. If you live close enough, we will come to you and pray with you. We will come to you and meet you. We will do what is necessary so that you feel a part of the Quinn Chapel AME Church family. God bless you and God keep you. But then the third question, are you standing in the need of prayer? If that's you, please put number three in the chat. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe that God hears and God answers prayer. And so we want to be able to pray with and pray for you. And so put number three in the chat. We will see your name. If there's something in particular we can pray for, put that in the chat. And we would love to reach out to you. We would love to reach heaven for you through prayer. And so please respond accordingly. We'd love to be your church home. We would love to pray the prayer of salvation with you. And we would love to pray with you. And in order to do so, we need to hear from you. Please respond accordingly. And now we come to the part of this worship experience where everyone can participate, no matter who you are. You may be in this country or another, but we would love to hear from you. And we'd love to hear from you by way of your gifts to God. We'd love for you to bless Quinn, but most of all to bless God. And so the giving platforms, as they now come upon the screen, we want you to give. We want you to connect with Quinn. We want you to partner with us in ministry so by sowing seeds so that we all can recognize God's harvest in our lives. Let the church say amen. And so I'm going to ask you, if you give through, through the different platforms, Put in the chat, I'm a partner. Put in the chat, I'm sowing a seed. Put in the chat, I, I am giving by faith. And maybe you don't even require any of that. Maybe you're just saying that unto God. And that is just as fine. But we want to hear from you. We want to know you're a part of our greater church family. And in order to do so, we would love for you to give. Maybe you're a part of another church body, but you still would like to give. God is going to bless you. Every seed you sow, we're praying over them that you will reap a harvest. And so please respond accordingly. Please give as God has given unto you. God has been good, and so let us give. And we pray that it come back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In Jesus' name, amen. My brother, my sister, again, we thank God you have joined us. As you know, Jesus went over 2,000 years ago, and so he has no hands but your hands. He has no feet but your feet. Go now and be the hands of Jesus. Go now and be the feet of Jesus. And the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace now, henceforth, and forevermore. And wherever you are, if you're in agreement, say amen. Amen. God bless you.